Hi, I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that Don't Breathe is no perfect movie. So in Don't Breathe, three friends named Rocky, played by Jane Levy, Alex, played by Dylan Manette, and another guy whose nickname is Money, played by Daniel Savato, break into a house that they think contains a hidden safe with hundreds of thousands of dollars. However, the house's owner, a blind war veteran, played by Stephen Lang, catches them by surprise with his army training and the use of his other four senses, and he begins hunting them down as they try to escape his heavily locked house. Now, fair warning, do not go into this movie expecting likable characters. Our three protagonists rob houses, vandalize them on a regular basis, solely for the purpose of gaining money for themselves. And the antagonist has a secret of his own that I do not want to spoil, because in all honesty, it's actually a pretty good one. And if there's any character that you really root for in this movie, it is Rocky, who is played very well by Jane Levy. And the only reason you really root for her is because her motivation of breaking into the house, wanting to take the money and leave her abusive family and take her younger sister with her, we don't really condone her actions, but at the same time, we at least understand why she's desperate enough to rob the blind man, despite the fact that he is going around the house trying to kill her at the same time. And Levy very excellently, in my opinion, portrays the terror that comes with being trapped in the house of a trained killer that you do identify with her in that way. But the scene sealer by far in this movie is Stephen Lang as the blind guy, who is absolutely fantastic. I'd say 90% of his scenes are without dialogue for him, and they mainly feature him using his senses, like his hearing, in order to track a footstep in a certain direction, or using his sense of smell to track someone else's blood. But at the same time, he's not invincible either. He does miss when he tries to shoot at people, and he can walk past someone without even noticing. So at the same time, even though he's kind of at an advantage being armed and using his other senses, he is still blind, and he still has to work his way to find the other two. And like I said, his motivation, even though we, again, don't identify with him, but we at least understand why he's violent towards other people. This movie is directed by Fede Alvarez, who is better known for directing the Evil Dead remake. And he has mentioned in interviews that he made this movie after reading criticisms of the Evil Dead remake that he worked on, that there was too much focus on blood and gore, and that it was more about shocking the audience as opposed to building up tension. So he did want to make a movie that was an original concept, had no gore whatsoever, and focused more on building suspense and tension instead of just focusing on shock value, and he succeeds exceptionally in this movie. He uses a wide variety of camera angles in order to build tension, whether it be a wide shot that simultaneously shows the blind man in one room and Alex in the one room next to him. The cinematography is very swift and fluid. There's a long take of the burglars looking for the safe that goes from one floor to the next where they have to pass the blind guy once or twice. And if you saw the trailer, there is that scene where it's shot in night vision where the blind man has cut off the electricity in the basement and Rocky and Alex have to feel their way around the house and navigate themselves out. It's a very stylistic choice, and it does set it apart from other traditional horror movies. And when the burglars and the blind man are in the same room, it is truly palpable in its intensity because there is no music or dialogue, all the characters' actions are slowly drawn out to keep the audience anticipating the next move. And when the blind man fires a shot in a certain direction, there's no loud burst of loud music. The sound effects are very realistic, they fit the scenarios that they're in, and they pay off very nicely in my opinion. Now the one thing Alvarez hasn't really improved upon based on his last film is how to construct naturalistic dialogue. There are a lot of good sequences that do rely on complete silence and just watching the characters' expressions and figuring out what move they're going to make next. But usually whenever two characters have a conversation in this movie, despite the fact that the actors are trying their hardest to perform the lines as realistically as possible, I was always aware that they were just explaining their backstories like why Rocky has a ladybug tattoo on her arm or when the blind man does explain his very interesting and still very creepy backstory to the main characters, I just felt like you could have shown these moments in like little glimpses, little flashbacks where we can actually witness these events for ourselves. And I don't know if it's because Alvarez and his co-writer 
wrote the script in their native language and was just translated poorly because they are Uruguayan, English is their second language, or if they just felt like they had to explain certain facts that the audience could already pick up or just imagine for themselves. And on top of that, some of the dialogue, it just sounds really corny, especially from the boyfriend Money in this movie. Not only is Money a very crappy nickname, but he spends most of the movie just picking on Alex and making up the stupidest pathetic nicknames ever. Like, for example, he actually insults him by calling him Judge Judy. Oh, snap. <laughs> But my main problem with this movie mostly involves the third act of the film, which was still very exciting and still very intense. But there are so many moments when the blind man seemingly defeats the burglars and you think he's going to win and kill them. But every time they just get back up and keep fighting them, and then you think they're going to escape and the movie's going to end. But then the movie just keeps repeating the cycle over and over again. And like I said, these scenes were still well shot as usual, still well acted, and they managed to keep the claustrophobia of the film intact, even when they are coming so close to escaping the house. So I was still on the edge of my seat, and I wanted to know what happened next. But at the same time, every time the scene fades to black, only to cut to the next scene, I did start to get impatient after a while. So all in all, Don't Breathe may not have the most likable characters or the best dialogue, and the finale may annoy some people, but for me, it is just so well acted and such a well-filmed, atmospheric home invasion thriller that I had a great time watching it. And for that reason, I'm going to give Don't Breathe a 4 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at NoPerfectMovie.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.